actually the fact that it does that it, it looks like a combat ship. This ship is specifically only for combat. It feels like home to me when I come back to this ship. It's the most comfortable to fly. There's something no nonsense about its shape. You just want to walk in somewhere and just stomp all over everything. It's obviously great. At that. And uh, with a wing of four on me, I still managed to kill him. And ever since I, I did that, I feel like I kind of fell in love with combat, specifically in the Corvette. The Corvette. The Corvette. The Corvette. The Corvette. The Corvette! The Federal Corvette. The Federal Corvette. The Federal Corvette. Here it is, the end-all be-all of Federation firepower, and the undisputed king of the Hazrez, the Federal Corvette, and it's worth a moment to take it in. It lacks the polished composites and mirrored finish of its imperial competition, but somehow it's just as beautiful. But then again, I threw up a type. I'm not one for core dynamic styling, and frankly, I often think they modeled their ships off of doorstops. But the Corvette is different. There's something about it that speaks to you. You know what this ship is just by looking at it. You know what it's capable of. You know that it's dangerous. I don't even know where to start on this ship. This is, uh, it's been my go-to ship for the past, like, Two or three years. It it looks like it means business just sitting still. Just for me, the, the combat ship of choice. Nothing feels like a proper warship quite like the Corvette. And this isn't exactly shocking news. The Corvette is the combat ship of choice for a lot of commanders, and especially notorious for those who have seen it in action. It has a reputation. One that's well earned. This is the most heavily armed battleship in the galaxy. A ship armed with two class 4 hardpoints, an obscene amount of armor, and maneuvering thrusters that'll make a Viper pilot blush. And there's other good news too. There's enough internal slots in here that you can get fairly creative with your loadout, or you could just make the whole thing nigh indestructible with hull and shield reinforcements. A size 7 shield cell bank means that even if a group of overzealous religious wingnuts attacks you in mass, your prismatic shields may well never go down at all. And even if they do, it very well may take them several days to chew through the armor. And while my personal favorite ship technically has more damage per second, the Corvette will give you better time on target, and more of an excuse to laugh like a maniac. This, this ship that we're in right now is the first ship that I have done any meaningful combat in. I think the first version of the Cube Combo I was flying, I used cannons. And hearing those two cannons go off right behind you, that's amazing. And it can do any mission in the game, yet it still happens to be the best ship for clearing conflict zones. All this fire and fury has earned the ship the infamy it deserves. Just look at this view. Look at how dope that looks. Look at that. I'm flying a spaceship. Because there is no other ship that gives me the sense of unadulterated brute force that this ship does. And if I ever feel like dominating a conflict zone by myself, there simply is no other ship I'd rather be flying. 
I don't have to worry about the guy with the big guns. I am the big gun. And it all just feeds this visceral madness and pride, knowing that there isn't anything in here that can stop you. The battle was over the moment you stepped on the field. This is just for fun. But, and this is a big one, that fun comes at a cost. Hey guys and girls, my thoughts on the Federal Corvette. I don't actually use it. There is, frankly, an obscene amount of effort into turning this ship into something that makes the boom boom look good. The one I have here represents literally thousands of hours of material gathering, credit grinding, and unnecessary travel to engineering bases. Several weeks spent pledging loyalty to someone I can't remember to spend even more credits on a part I will have only temporary access to. And we're not even talking about playing postman to the Federation to unlock the rank. Who knew delivering mail could make you a rear admiral? Because what's even worse is when you find yourself up against actual people who know what they're doing, you're going to get eaten alive. The unfortunate truth is that a well-flown FDL or crate will absolutely spank even the best spec Corvette in competitive play. A halfway decent cutter pilot will have you chasing them to the ends of the galaxy, all while chipping away at your shields. And to be frank, there's a reason you don't see a lot of Corvettes mingling with the PvP community. Speed is what dictates these engagements, and the Corvette simply isn't fast enough. And I, I just I don't enjoy how how slow it is, how lumbering it is, how poorly it handles. Now, for a big class ship. It handles rather well, but for the ships that I enjoy to fight, you know, maybe I even say you're, you know, you're talking to the guy who has a Sidewinder as his logo. You'd be forgiven for feeling a bit discouraged. The ship is expensive to buy and even more to outfit. Around the 1.2 billion mark. It requires a mind-numbing rank unlock, and then you're going to need another few hundred hours collecting baubles to make it useful. If you fly it around other people, it makes you a target, and watching your prismatic stack and shield cell banks become worthless from a single torpedo is probably the most demoralizing thing that can happen to anyone in the history of the universe. There are, of course, very good reasons why the Corvette is simply not worth the effort. But when you walk out onto the battlefield, it's hard to remember what they were. So it took me a long time to get this. I, I appreciate having it so much more because I had to work for it so hard. Even when you know what the problems are, you still respect the Titan when you see it. I mean, you become attached to a ship. I've had this ship for multiple years now. It's been changed a bit through the years, but I've had this for so long now that you kind of become a bit attached to it. I said at the beginning of this film that this ship speaks to you. I can say that because it spoke to me and because I've seen it speak to others. And when something is able to do that through how it looks or what it does or how it makes you feel, then there's a name for it. A work of art. Thank you all so much for watching this series. It was a privilege to make it for you. I have an official announcement coming out soon that I hope you'll stay tuned for, and I look forward to hearing from all of you in the comments. A sincere thank you to all the creators who chimed in here, and links to their channels are down below. Please go show them some love. As always, the soundtrack is available on the Patreon, and if you could hit the like button for the algorithm, I'd really appreciate it. Please have an absolutely wonderful day, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.